What's up, everybody? Um, I'm going to apologize right off the bat because I've been a little under the weather lately. So if I sound congested or continuously sniff throughout the video, I apologize. Um, my whole life I've had questions, and I think a lot of us that know the earth is flat feel this way or have felt this way. Um, we always knew something was amiss, you know. And maybe it's also the case with most conspiracy theorists, but... I asked so many questions growing up and, and was such a smart aleck and I loved to debate. Uh, most of my teachers couldn't understand me, so I think they just took me as offensive and disruptive, which I guess by the standards of public education, such would be the case. But I began as I got older to see that there was a mass difference between someone who believes um, everything they hear from authority as truth and those who see through the veil, even if just a little bit, right? On September 11, 2001, I was still a kid by my standards. I had just turned 19 and was still in my stupid days, right? So I bought right into the whole narrative. Although I do remember asking my roommate at the time if he thought it was peculiar um, that they had come up with this narrative so fast. Osama bin Laden did it, Al-Qaeda, 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 right? I literally walked into the room right away to see the plane hit the second tower. What time was that? Like 9.03 a.m., I think? And by 10 a.m., they already knew the story from beginning to end. I also wondered why our Air Force failed to intercept the planes, but as I said, I bought right into the narrative all the same. Uh, even the first time I heard uh, that 9-11 was an inside job, I laughed. You know, I couldn't wrap my mind around this one yet. But... As the months passed, something inside me grew, and I couldn't stop it, no matter what I did. By 2004, I was reading and writing and wondering and questioning, watching documentary after documentary. I became obsessed. I got, I got in so many arguments. I was even threatened with violence on several occasions just for simply asking questions. It put a big damper on my marriage, so you know I was completely obsessed. So I had to take all my magazines and everything I had written and all the books and DVDs, etc., and put them all together in a, in a pile in my backyard and burn them. Um, I was obsessed. I had to. So after that, I kind of gave up on the conspiracy theorist thing for a while. Now, fast forward to March 2015. I met a guy who we became quickly, we became good friends real quick. Uh, we clicked, I guess. Um, he showed me a few things about the law and the Constitution that led me to begin looking into things again. But this time... I found the rabbit hole, and I jumped in head first. It started with the discovery of the Bavarian Illuminati, which led me to the modern-day Illuminati and political infiltration. That led me to Hollywood and the music industry, and so on. Then about four months later, that same friend comes to me and says, Dude, the earth is flat. Now, I had that exact same knee-jerk, you're an idiot reaction we all had. So we argued for about 30 minutes. Now, I'm arguing about something, mind you, that I know nothing about. All I know is that it's a spinning ball being flung through space around the sun, blah, blah, blah. That's all I knew. All I was doing was just giving parrot responses, basically. So during this 30-minute argument. So I set out for the next two weeks trying to prove him wrong. Now, at first, I denied what I was seeing for quite a while, but very shortly after I began to research it, I did begin to see proof I had been lied to. So, two weeks later, I was convinced the earth is flat. Then when I first told someone, and they laughed, as did the next, and the next, and the next, I realized what was really happening, and I knew this was the biggest deception ever. I mean, if they could convince someone of this so much that they're willing to cut you out of their life, and immediate family and friends... Uh, mock you, even behind your back, make fun of you? I began to think about the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 and how the serpent lied to Eve and how it all started there. So I started reading God's word again. I found the book of Enoch and Jasher, and I realized that everything I was taught, even from church my whole childhood, was a lie. It was taught to someone else and passed down the line like some twisted evil game of telephone. I could not believe I could be so stupid. My naivety actually shamed me. One day I cried out to Yahshua, literally telling him I was sorry I was so deluded and that I hadn't been seeking after him in the truth and that I wanted my eyes opened. I wanted the truth. All I wanted was the truth now. All I wanted to do is seek after the truth now and seek after him. 
right away, seriously, no joke, right away Yahweh opened my eyes and ears like never before. I began to even understand the universal language like nothing I had ever noticed. When someone spoke, I could literally hear the deception, even if they didn't know they were doing it, because it was the language itself. I'm sure a lot of you understand what I'm talking about. Now I see the truth. And reading his word in the three missing books that I found that match up with Genesis in the beginning of the story, um, I recently came on to the book of Jubilees, he has given me understanding of what has happened and what is happening. So, you know, coming onto this flat earth thing and every since has been very trying for me to say the least and very lonely. You know, I have not met one single person since I came onto flat earth who already believes the earth or who already knows the earth is flat. Now, I've converted people who, who are globe earthers into flat earthers, but um, um, helped convert, what have you. But I uh, never met one, only online. So it's been a very lonely road. And it seems like everyone is afraid of this topic. Now, they're not afraid to attack it or attack you for it. But what happens when you're cornered? What do they tell you in a mass shooting situation if you can't run or hide? Be prepared to fight, right? So somehow we have all been programmed with this idea so much that I believe, I think, I truly, truly think, as Rob Skiba uh, questions, that this could be the delusion spoke of in 2 Thessalonians 2. So if I could give any advice to those who are just coming on to this topic and are struggling with the blowback you're getting from those around you, number one, don't try to prove it unless you can. Don't try to prove it unless you have the money and the means to conduct experiments and document and show your proof. And even then, be ready for the blowback and a higher level of ignorance than you've ever, ever experienced. Trust me. But if you're like me and can... You know, you barely have the means to get back and forth to work, let alone buy a Nikon P900 or a real nice big telescope or a boat. <laughs> Just put the questions back out there. Put them back on them. I saw a post from someone recently that basically said, what if the shoe were flipped? What if everyone thought the earth was flat and we were the ones trying to prove a globular earth spinning at 1,000 miles an hour around, 66,000 miles an hour around a gigantic sun 93 million miles away? Oh, and by the way, all the water sticks to it like it does in a pail of water. Think about it. And the second thing I could say is pray. Ask Yahweh to give you the strength and patience and knowledge. If you know the earth is flat, you already have the eye of discernment. You have the ears to hear and the eyes to see. Yahshua said, let he who has eyes to see, see, and let he who has ears to hear, hear. That's you, friend. That's me. That's us. We have the eyes and ears. We see and hear what others cannot. And the reason we do is because we already know the truth. The word says that as well. The disciples asked Yeshua why he only explained his parables to them and not the non-believers. And he said to them, they don't know the truth already. Therefore, they will not perceive my words and what I'm saying to them. The truth is, guys, the earth is flat, but they don't know that already. They believe the earth is round, so they're not going to perceive what you're telling them or the evidence you provide them. Truth be told, I've shown some undeniable evidence that cannot be refuted, yet they still deny what is right in front of their faces. So like I said, ask for patience. Ask for strength. Don't try to prove it if you can't. They're going to tell you and believe that you are just listening and believing what everyone else is saying, when in reality it's them who's listening and believing what everyone else is telling them. It was written it would be like that too in the end. Nathan Roberts um, asked the question over and over and over again in his book, The Doctrine of the Shape of the Earth. He asked, do you believe God's word is faithful and true? You know, let man be a liar and God be the truth, right? So the word of Yahshua, and remember, Yahshua and his God, father God are one, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Therefore, Yeshua is Yahweh, and vice versa. Yeshua is the Word, and vice versa. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, right? So, Yeshua says that the earth is fixed, immovable, on top of water, under the firmament, which is an impierceable dome. And nowhere in his Word did he say it was orbiting or rotating around anything. He specifically said... <clears throat> 
excuse me, he specifically said that the sun and moon were created on day four and circle above us within the same firmament as the earth, the humans, birds, stars, and the waters below. So look, guys, read your word. Research. Only tell the truth, even if it's not popular, even if everyone around you is lying. Because let me tell you something. Just because everyone believes a lie doesn't make it true. And just because nobody believes the truth doesn't make it not true. 100% no lying. And be vigilant and love one another. Please.